Hey, it's Mike here, and today, vitamin A5. New vitamins to worry about? That's the content I want. Yeah, at this point, it does kind of feel like we're playing vitamin bingo, just shouting out random letters and numbers. And the next square is vitamin A5, and we have vitamin bingo. You win a deficiency. However, I think it's good to just learn about new discoveries that they're made, how important they are, how they work, what role in the body they might play, how well they are being accepted by mainstream science or not. We're gonna talk about that a little bit here, as well as what diseases, if any, they are connected to. And as this 2024 study at least claims, it's a critical dietary factor for mental health, as well as a bunch of other areas, so let's go. And yes, I am in the garden here for a beautiful sunset. Sorry if there's any background noise. I do have a ton of little cherry tomatoes behind me. You can't really see that well. But the garden's pretty much done for the year, and I'm about to leave for Europe for my Greece trips, which I'm super excited about. So if you're coming, Hello, but vitamin A5, what the heck is it? Well, we're talking about something that was discovered in 2018 and really is an umbrella term for the precursors of a really complicated word, 9-cis-13-14 dihydroretinoic acid. That was so complicated that even I just stopped watching the video. <laughs> no, I'm joking, but the precursors are of course coming from food. And I will say right now that it has not been fully accepted by the mainstream as a vitamin but researchers say, hey, it fits the definition of a vitamin that you guys have given. But this is also new that maybe it will become a well-known vitamin, maybe it won't. Still, we should learn about it. So what are those precursors in food? Well, we have also complicated 9-cis beta, beta carotene. Yes, that was two betas. And then we have 9-cis 13 14 dihydroretinol. So it's just easier to remember that one has beta carotene in the name and the other does not. And yes, they are precursors for what is described as an endogenous activator of the nuclear hormone receptor RXR. We'll talk about RXR more in a little bit. This will all be simple in the end, hopefully. But this is where vitamin A5, those precursors become really relevant to just the current dietary culture, whether we're talking about vegan diets or carnivore diets, and just what people are consuming because they are in different foods or not in some other foods. And the winner here really is, thankfully I'm in a garden to demonstrate it physically, green leafy vegetables for their rich content of the one that has beta carotene in the name. And the other one, the dihydroretinol, is in animal products, but in very small amounts here. So as researchers directly say, Quote here, a special nutritional focus seems to be placed on leafy and root vegetables, which are rich in this compound. So if anybody's gonna be getting a deficiency in this stuff, it's probably gonna be carnivore dieters. We'll talk more about deficiency in a bit and how much of that has been studied. But from this other study <laughs> regarding food items, amounts of vitamin A5 in the form of provitamin A5, the predominant form in the diet, were found to range from 0.1 to 39 micrograms per gram for individual fruits and vegetables, with the highest concentration being in leafy vegetables again. The study goes on to say that approximately two thirds of the Western population out there is too low in vitamin A5 intake. And from this study, the recommendation appears to be about 1.1 per day as suggested by an international expert consortium. Who are they? We don't know. They're more or less the people who have studied this so far. So it needs to be more presented to like the UN, WHO, et cetera, and see how they respond. They say specifically typical European amounts were around 0.9. They didn't have a US amount, sadly, but probably lower than that. But it's good to know that this isn't just some weird vegan side project that is spearheaded by super biased vegans <laughs> to make vegetables look even better. Now, looking to the studies on this, they're generally funded, like from this one, by neutral organizations. No one's like writing vegan books. However, I did find a study with some researchers who were invested in patents that would make these precursors. So they obviously want them to be successful to sell them to make more money. But the debate on whether or not this is gonna be an accepted vitamin is gonna be an interesting one. And I do think that it fits the definition, that's what researchers are arguing as well, of a vitamin. While most of them are essential, there are quite a few that are not quite fully essential. And the argument for this being essential or required to be gotten in the diet is you know, reasonably strong, we'll get into, yet it's not currently considered essential. That doesn't mean it can't be considered a vitamin either. We have, for example, vitamin D, which is not essential. You can get it from the sun in that sense. And then we also have vitamin K and vitamin B7, which can both be made by our gut bacteria. In the case of vitamin K, like perhaps up to half of our vitamin K is made by our gut bacteria. So it doesn't rule it out. But some plant foods that it is high in are spinach, kale, parsley, green tea, kiwis, green peppers, okay amounts in papaya. Can we talk about just how good this piece of chard looks on camera? Wow, so shiny. 
And for actual levels from this study, highest concentrations were found in leafy vegetables including spinach at 312 micrograms per gram, kale at 59, as well as root vegetables such as carrots at 117, while levels in fruits were relatively low. For instance, papaya and apricots were around two, but people do eat a bit more of those. And some have actually suggested that it be called vitamin X, which will ruin my joke about people claiming a vegan diet is missing a vitamin that hasn't been discovered yet that I referred to as vitamin X. All right, now let's get into its actual role in the body, how it works, and it again works by being an RXR agonist, retinoid X receptor, that is a retinol sort of vitamin A pathway that it activates, and it signals a ton of different processes in the body from metabolic, when we're talking about regulated lipid metabolism and energy homeostasis. We also have an immune aspect where it is capable of modulating immunity and leukocyte recruitment, inflammatory responses. And it also, in terms of our cells, plays a role in cell proliferation, differentiation, and apoptosis, which is that programmed cell death and we don't want cells to be around anymore. RXR also plays a crucial role in myelin repair, which is that insulation around our nerve cells. And that's where I see it potentially playing a role in some of these neurodegenerative diseases. And this is where multiple sclerosis could come in where the myelin sheath on our motor neurons gets stripped off. And yeah, RXR is implicated in a bunch of neurological disorders just in terms of its connection. Talking Alzheimer's, Parkinson's strokes, MS, glaucoma, etc. And how could this be possible? Well, back to that study on mental health, they say, quote, through control of dopamine signaling amyloid beta clearance, which is of course involved in Alzheimer's, neuroprotection and neuroinflammation, the A5-RXR vitamin A signaling might be one of or even the critical factor necessary for good mental health, healthy brain aging, as well as for preventing drug addiction and preventing a large array of nervous system diseases. Are they going too far? We don't know yet. <laughs> but I will say to zoom out, green leafy vegetables and brain function are highly connected from a ton of different studies. I know there's a lot of different phytochemicals that could be helping, but we might as well just mention a study like this one on nearly a thousand adults found that people who ate one to two servings per day of green leafy vegetables had the cognitive ability of a person 11 years younger than those who consumed none. And also super compelling is that RXR agonist activators are already a target for cancer medications. For example, one lymphoma drug. And then we also have it being researched for a bunch of other different cancers like lung cancer, breast cancer, etc. But now we have to ask the question, can people actually get a vitamin A5 deficiency? Will people end up with symptoms if they are low? And that is where unfortunately, because this was discovered like seven years ago and probably not super funded with research, we don't have an answer on that. However, researchers say likely. As this paper mentions, quote, as important specific functions have been outlined, which we've talked about already, it's really logical that these are areas of potential deficiency symptoms due to low intake of vitamin A5. And they speculate about deficiency symptoms, talking about having some mental health effects in terms of stress, anxiety, reduced cognitive abilities, depression, with more serious ones being neurodevelopmental diseases, mental slash psychotic diseases, etc. <laughs> So how would we even find this out? Well, we'd have to take a bunch of people, test them further levels of vitamin A5, see which people are low, see what symptoms they have, separate those from other potential health issues. Because I would like, because I hate to say that if somebody is low in vitamin A5, they're probably low in a bunch of other vitamins that you get from plants as well. But it's also possible that there are benefits from getting higher levels of these. We need so much more research on this, but I'm happy to sort of introduce vitamin A5 to you guys and yeah, eat your leafy greens. And this is another reason to just really not be carnivore. You could add this to an already long list of low levels of intake that people on a carnivore diet have are really completely devoid nutrients. For example, you know, folate we're seeing low in some of these carnivore dieters. Of course, we're seeing vitamin C getting low. So yeah, I'm looking forward to more research on this. It appears to only be positive to be eating more. You know, is it going to be a critical factor for mental health? We will see. They made a decent argument for it. So yeah, let me know down below what you think about vitamin A5. Uh, did you even know about it? Do you care about it now? <laughs> or if like me, are you just going to keep eating your greens? All right, thanks for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one, which won't be filmed here. Thanks for watching.